Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for a new episode of Elon's biography series. I'm so excited for this one. So just close your eyes, enjoy, and imagine with me. Okay, imagine you're just seventeen. You're ready to embark on a new life, thousands of miles away from everything that's familiar with you. The future is a blur of possibilities and challenges. Also, imagine hearing from your own father as you leave. You will never be successful. You are nothing. This isn't the TV show Succession. This was Elon Musk's reality. That was tough, right? But even in the face of such harshness, he wasn't alone. His mother made an incredible sacrifice. Uprooting her life to move to Canada and support him, together four of them faced and crammed into that tiny one-bedroom home in Toronto, all in pursuit of a dream that seemed almost unreachable, which is to have a better life for the people they love. So join me today as we board the bus with a young Elon traveling. 1,700 miles across the vast landscapes of Canada, journeying from a past shadowed by abandonment to a uncertain but promising future as an immigrant. I feel the weight of every mile as we explore the making of an eccentric billionaire. So, let's do this. So he left South Africa with 2K. From his dad and two thousand dollars from his mom, and some will be worth roughly eight thousand Canadian dollars today. Something very incredible about his mom is that the money she gave him was actually from the money she won in a beauty contest as a teenager. Which is, if you have followed the series so far, then you knew it's from one of the first. Episodes that I have done that she was so heartbroken because she was on a fight with her dad, which is her boyfriend at the time, that he cheated on her. So she was so sad she couldn't eat for a week. But because of that, she was very thin when she entered the beauty contest and she won. So she saved that in her bank account till seventeen. That Elon is ready to leave home, and she gave that as a present. And but it is so much more than just money itself, right? And especially all the listeners out there, if you are a immigrant or you are an international student, then you really know that is so much more than just what your parents gave you, but their wishes, right? And After a week, he's been in Canada. He bought a 100 Greyhound Discovery Pass that allowed him to travel by bus anywhere in Canada for six months. So he found a cousin around his age, and he decided to go there. Right? But check this out—it's wild because he was on the bus traveling from point A to point B, which is go see his cousin, and he was on the bus for 1,700 miles. And really, like. That is something incredible, right? But as an immigrant, as someone in a new country, you really have no other choice. And then he went to stay with his cousin, and they helped him by, you know, showing them around. And he spent his 18th birthday there. And then obviously he need to work, right? So he went to、um, like the bureau where they assigned you jobs.、Um, he saw there are jobs. Either most of them paying five dollar an hour, but there is one that's paying eighteen dollar an hour, which is decent even considered nowadays standard, right? But it's absolutely extremely dangerous, and the working condition is essentially hellish because he was cleaning out boilers in the lumber mill, and this is what happened in the book. Describe his working environment, where wood pulp was being boiled while shoveling out the lime that had cracked on the walls. If the person at the end of the tunnel didn't remove the goo fast enough, you would be trapped while sweating your guts out. He recalls, "It was like a Dickensian steampunk nightmare filled with dark pipes and the sound of jackhammers." 
and he did it at the age of 18 like in a totally different country so it's pretty incredible but hey at least he's not speaking a different language or learning a different language from scratch which is myself and many other people have done that so that's no big deal let's focus on this um while well, elon was in vancouver may mask she actually flew from south africa as well and she decided to move there which is so incredible and she did first she only uh may and elon then elon's little brother came and elon's little sister came as well at first they all lived in one bedroom apartment where tosca and her mother sharing a bed while elon slept on a couch there was little money may remembers crying when she spilled some milk because she didn't have enough to buy anymore so tough it's incredible um may at university she's working there and modeling agency and as a diet consultant and she said i worked very every day and also four nights a week i took off one afternoon sunday to do laundry and get groceries i didn't even know what my kids were doing because i was hardly at home and then a few months later their situation got better, so they invested in one of the first big investments was like a $300 carpet because so that uh, their cousins or Elon's little brother visit, they could stay there. And the second big purchase was a computer for Elon. And I just want to shout out, acknowledge all the mother out there, uh, all the families supporting children's dream. It's, you know, it's incredible. There's no great inventions and great things accomplished without our families. And moving on, Chapter 7, Queens. And by the way, here, Queens is a university in Canada. This is not like Queens, New York, we're talking about. So he's 19 and 20, right? Here's the number means on this chart. So he actually enrolled in Queens for social life. And this is what he said, because I didn't want to spend my university time with a bunch of dudes. So that's why I went there. And he transferred only after two years but the most important thing he learned how to work collaboratively with smart people and make use of the so socratic method to achieve commonality of purpose which is to work with other people but also at the same time have dialogue with them to make sure that there is consensus or to essentially being a visionary and really work closely with other people but also tell them why right because there's saying said people don't care about what you do until they know why you do it and also he immersed himself in strategy games for hours and hours that's how he relaxed escaped stress and probably honed his tactical skills and strategic thinking for business in the future um, also, here's something they did um, with what Elon did with his younger brother. They do a lot of cold calling. So they always pick someone that's interesting enough on the newspaper and to call them and shout out to his little brother because that's what he did. He's a little more outgoing. So he's the one that did a cold call. And they, one day they called Peter Nicholson, the executive in charge of strategic planning at Sotia Bank. And here's a very important lesson to all the entrepreneurs out there listening. They did a cold call and they had a meeting and he became a bank trainee. And I actually personally have similar stories. When I first moved to LA, I was working at an event. It was a wine tasting event. A lot of people came and I gathered a lot of business cards. And just actually being there, having a conversation, genuine conversation with people. And I was mentioning them that I was also in university at the time. I told them I want to move to LA for a internship to learn all my skills. I have no idea what, what I want to do in the future to, you know, go back to my own, home, own countries or stay here, whatever. But I just want to hone my skills. And I was being as genuine as possible. And because of that, I actually met, maybe he's watching this right now, Mr. Ryan from Oracle. And uh, he was so nice. He offered me a winter internship, essentially. And it was just absolutely incredible, right? So for entrepreneurs out there, 
just being as genuine as possible. Tell people your why, and you never know. And especially at the beginning stage, you literally have nothing to lose, right? So back to the case, Elon. He worked, but he did not like, nor was he good at working for other people. It was not in his nature to be differential or to assume that others might know more than he did. Now here we go. The big deal. After his sophomore year, he decided to transfer to Penn, which is University of Pennsylvania, one of the Ivy League schools, one of the most prestigious universities on the planet. And he decided to major in engineer plus business. He said the essence of being an engineer is to address any problem by drilling down to the most fundamental tenets of physics. And he also did business because he was concerned that if he didn't study business, he would be forced to work for someone who did. And overall, how he planned at the time is this: is what he said. My goal was to engineer products by having a feel for the physics, and never have to work for a boss with a business degree. So he was quite determined and even stubborn ever since、um, his young age. And if you've been following this. Series which I strongly com- recommend you to. Then you knew really from the beginning, early years, that how he always has been have these traits like very determined, very fearless, and just a man of action. And then we got the interesting character coming up, Robin Wren. Elon called Robin the only person better than him at physics. And according to Robin, Elon focused on three areas that would shape his career. One is collabor- calibrating the force of gravity, which I'm not going to go too much into detail here, but more or less means that adjusting or setting instruments so that they accurately measure the force of gravity in a particular location or under certain conditions. And and then second, analyzing the properties of materials. The study and evaluation of the physical and chemical attributes of various substances to understand how they behave under different conditions. It could be in extreme weather, right, or in extreme high speeds. And also, he would discuss with Ren how the laws of physics apply to building rockets. He kept talking about making a rocket that could go to Mars. Ren recalls, and Ren. Believe that he was nuts, and I put together some interesting material here about you know something to be considered when it comes to potentially you know building rockets or lay down foundation for him in the future for Tesla. Just for those super geeky or super curious people out there, and、uh, yeah, drop a comment down below if you want to download this PDF.、Uh, we'll send it to you. So, for example, here's like law of physics, right? You, he used probably used、uh, Newton's law of motion to think about what would happen when the rocket, such as moving at such high speed, right? Because you need to have so much thrust、um, that you need to leave the atm- atmosphere, right? And obviously, when it comes to combustion, aerodynamics, matters, material science, quantum mechanics, and all that, right? So, by understanding, applying these laws and principles, right? Engineers, or in this case, Elon at the time, he was already probably already designing rockets in his mind, or at least taking those mental notes, right? And like I just mentioned, the rockets need to be able to overcome Earth's gravitational pull, withstand various forces, and successfully reach their intended destination. So all these things need to be considered. And yeah, like it's truly incredible. And by the way, this Robin, he later on became the vice president of sales at Tesla, and he was also instrumental in helping Tesla set up a plant in Shanghai. And again, another lesson to the entrepreneurs: network in the prestigious school is so, so, so valuable. Or even just network at, like in general, right? Because you will never know that one of your friends 
um, down the line become expert in something and you and him or you and her or you all could just gather get together and build a bigger team to what kind of business all together so yeah keep that in mind and also i bet elon he really honed in his um first principle thinking a lot during his time at Penn. So I will probably make some videos about that as well. So drop a comment down below if you want to find out more about that. And as well, this is where he also became a party animal. Uh, many of us might have heard the story, right? So him and his friend, they rented a house outside, like I think it's like West Philadelphia. And they have a band on one floor, a DJ on another, tables with beer and jello shots, probably beer pong as well, and someone at the door to collect $5 entries fee. On some nights, they would draw 500 people, which would easily pay the rent for a month. I would assume maybe you might be able to pay two months of rent. I mean, indeed, the house is two floor, but this is early 2000 to now even, and how expensive would it be for rent for a house like this in west philly i don't know maybe you know if you do know let me know that'd be great although elon loved the vibe of the parties he never got fully immersed in them he was stone stope i was stone stoper also he said but his friend said that he enjoyed being around party but not fully in it he was alienated and withdrawn and i wish elon knew how to be a little bit happier. Like I just mentioned in the beginning, right? He's really someone that's unique and just like quite different. And also like, I don't blame him because he came from such unique and even painful childhood. Conclusion. As Elon's first wife once said, Extreme success results from an extreme personality and comes at the cost of many other things. From his late teens to his early 20s, Elon didn't just chase his dream alone. And his family was right there with him too, making sacrifices of their own. It is a testament to what I've said before in the previous episode. I truly believe that each one of us has the potential for greatness. You see, we humans have a unique gift. We are the only creatures on earth capable of dreaming about tomorrow and then actually working towards those dreams even under the shadow of uncertainty. Think about Duomo de Milano. One great cathedral that spent 600 years to build. So the people start building it, they knew they are not going to see the finished cathedral, but it still kept on going and going and going. Because they believed in God at their time, and they believed that they're working towards a higher purpose. So back to Elon, but perhaps the universe does have a way of balancing the skills. While his early years were marked by isolation, College became a sanctuary where he connected with like-minded individuals. It was a playground for experimentation, from the law of physics to elaborate parties to countless hours of video games and strategic games. <laughs> and as Elon nears graduation, the dot-com boom is heating up, and Silicon Valley is calling. But there's a catch. His visa is about to expire because he's a Canadian citizen, right? So what's next for this young immigrant with big dreams? How does he go from a ticking visa clock to the heart of tech innovation? Find out together with us in our next episode. Trust me, you won't want to miss it. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe because new episodes coming every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. This is Jazzy. Thank you so much for watching.